Hey, what's up everyone, and welcome to episode 27, part 1 of the Weekend Gear Guide. Today marks the first official day of winter, and now that winter has finally arrived, we'll go over part 1 of our winter season layer guide for our Terex technical outerwear in order to help provide you with the best comfort for your weekend winter activities such as winter hiking, backpacking, skating, ice climbing, alpine climbing, and snowshoeing. So let's get started. We'll begin first by going over a typical four layer winter layering system, which consists of the following layers. The first is the base layer that is typically a trim fitting, lightweight, short sleeve shirt or a midweight long sleeve shirt. Typical base layer fabrics used are either synthetic polyester, which is moisture wicking, fast drying and utilizes encapsulated anti-odor treatment or a merino wool or to a lesser extent, alpaca wool, which both have longer lasting natural anti-odor properties. For high output activities, heavier weight base layer shirts should be avoided due to longer drying times, which can lead to an uncomfortable flash off effect during rest periods, which can be mitigated with an insulated belay jacket. And lastly, cotton base layer shirts should definitely be avoided. The second layer is the mid layer, which provides lightly insulated warmth, good breathability and air permeability, and weather resistance through a DWR treatment. Mid layers can be a fleece jacket or an integrated insulated shell jacket consisting of 40 to 90 grams per square meter of synthetic insulation or a fleece lined soft shell jacket. The third layer is the outer shell layer, which can be a waterproof and or windproof hard shell jacket, both of which needs to offer good moisture vapor transfer and packability. Layers 1, 2, and sometimes 3, depending if it's wet and or windy, are what's referred to as your active layers, since these are the layers you will be using when engaged in your winter weather activities. And finally, the fourth and last layer is your insulated belay jacket layer, which is meant to go over all your other three layers when you are static, which means you're either on belay duties or resting for lunch near the hiking trail or hanging outside relaxing at camp. This layer will be windproof and weather resistant with a DWR treatment with a good warmth to weight ratio and packable with a two-way zipper. This layer will typically use 100 to 300 grams of 850 goose down fill or 65 to 200 grams per square meter of high loft packable insulation. Synthetic continuous filament insulation is preferred in cold, wet or humid conditions and provides the best value where down fill insulation is preferred in cold, dry conditions and provides the best warmth to weight ratio, loft retention and packability. The next important aspect to consider in your layering system is color selection based on the location and surroundings of your winter activity as well as the specific layer that will be exposed and utilized in these surroundings. If the winter activity that you'll be doing is in the back country, then we would highly recommend selecting any high visibility colors such as orange, red, yellow, or blue for your mid-layer, shell, and belay layers. This is what professional guides and search and rescue teams use, and examples of these colors are shown here from the Arcteryx Professional line. If the winter activity that you'll be doing is in the front country or side country, then we would recommend selecting any available color that provides good contrast against snow and the typical terrain that you'll be active in to help make it easier to be seen in case search and rescue is required, as shown in this example from Reddit. Please feel free to pause here and click the link below for more details. The colors for the products shown here are what we've selected and used for our layering guide recommendations in part 2 of this episode based on what was available on sale at the time that meets our contrast and comfort criteria for the winter activities that we'll be doing in these areas. And finally, for any everyday winter activities in either urban or suburban areas, we would recommend any available dark muted color, such as colors from these products shown here from the Arcteryx Everyday, Valence, and System A collection, though it should be noted that some of the Arcteryx technical outerwear and colors can certainly work for everyday wear. 
So to summarize our recommendation, high-vis for backcountry use, contrast for front and side country use, and muted for everyday urban and suburban use. One last point to make is that base layers and pants can be any available color and that these colors are typically black. So now that you're familiar with a typical four layer system and recommended colors for each of the layers based on the location and surroundings of your winter activity, the next important aspect to cover in our winter layering guide for Arcteryx technical outerwear is overall comfort level. So what are the key main factors that impact comfort in a winter layering system? The first factor that impacts comfort level which people immediately notice is how well an individual garment or garments layered on top of one another fit and allows for unrestricted mobility and freedom of movement which is one of the main areas where Arcteryx typically excels at and where customers are willing to pay more money for an Arcteryx product in comparison to similar cheaper products from other manufacturers due to the more comfortable fit and freedom of movement that an Arcteryx winter layering system provides. The second factor that impacts comfort level which people start to notice as soon as they wear and move in their garment over longer periods of time is the next to skin feel of the fabric that touches and brushes up against the skin, in particular the base layer and parts of the mid layer where the next to skin comfort is based on the fabric material used texture of the fabric and how the fabric is constructed and seamed together. The third factor which impacts comfort level which people notice as they increase and vary their activity level in various winter weather conditions is how well the appropriate layer in the winter layering system manages vapor and moisture buildup or provides the right amount of air permeability and weather resistance. The fourth factor which impacts comfort level is how well the appropriate layer provides the optimum amount of warmth and thermal regulation based on what that layer was designed for. And the last factor which impacts comfort level is the weight and bulkiness of your removable packable layers, specifically the shell jacket and insulated belay parka that you'll be carrying in your backpack when active in non-windy or wet conditions as well as the weight and bulkiness of the overall layering system when you're fully suited up and resting for lunch. So in order to help achieve and maintain optimum comfort level, how does a four layer system work? To help answer this question, we'll go over a general example using an activity versus temperature comfort level concept graph where the activity level is shown on the y-axis ranging from static activity level on the bottom all the way to high activity level on the top. On the x-axis, we have temperature ranging from cool on the left all the way to cold on the right. The ideal usage comfort range is illustrated by the green line as shown where a person who is walking at low to semi-moderate activity level while wearing a base layer and an active insulated mid-layer jacket will feel generally comfortable in cool weather conditions. When hiking at moderate activity level in cooler weather conditions, this same person will also feel generally comfortable while wearing the exact same layers under these conditions. When hill climbing or scrambling at high activity level in cold weather, this same person will also feel generally comfortable while wearing the exact same layers under these conditions. If this same person using the same layers happens to stop to rest while in either cooler or cold weather conditions, they will need to layer an additional warm puffy jacket over their active insulation mid-layer jacket and base layer in order to feel comfortably warm. And finally, if at any time there is any precipitation and or high wind during any one of these activities, a waterproof breathable hard shell will be required to go over the active layers in order to stay comfortably dry and or protected from wind chill. During rest period in cooler or cold weather conditions, the belay jacket can be layered over top of the base, mid, and outer hard shell layer. However, 
There are situations where a person becomes either uncomfortably hot or uncomfortably cold since their active insulation jacket and base layer is not meant to be used for activity levels and temperature that are outside the usage comfort range as shown here. So to summarize, stay within the usage comfort range by either adjusting your activity output level or your layering system based on the weather conditions. This concludes Part 1 of our Winter Season Layering Guide for Arcteryx Technical Outerwear. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions about Part 1 of our Arcteryx Technical Winter Layering Guide episode, please leave them in the comments below. Hit that like button if you found this guide helpful and informative, click on the subscribe button to get notified of new reviews, and stay tuned for the next Weekend Gear Guide episode.